taking over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, hour two of C to C on a midweek. Where do you hear Wednesday on Sports Grid? It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Make sure you get the uh, Sports Grid app. It's unbelievable. It's free. You heard me, free, F-R-E-E, free as me, on iOS and Android. Follow your favorite hosts like Carver High and get all the stories, highlights, odds, everything. And you can watch the network and listen to the network right on your phone. It's fantastic, the Sports Grid app. And make sure you catch us on X with sports grid live you can watch us on tv on x how crazy is that all right speaking of crazy uh, i'm sure aaron boone thought the jazz was crazy opening up his mouth yeah we did play that uh clip yesterday of jazz chisholm uh saying that the royals were lucky in game number two uh to get the win in the bronx against the yankees despite the yankees leaving uh, several villages on base uh, in the game. Here is Aaron Boone yesterday, Scotty. He was asked about uh, that Jazz comment about them being lucky. You know, I would disagree. I don't think they got lucky. I think they did a lot of really good things and and came in here and, and beat us last night. So, um, But I also looked at the line of questionings as it went. You know, I think what he was referring to more was probably, you know, we did hit into some tough luck. There were some hard hit balls and, you know, so that that line of questioning continued to where, you know, jazz can be um, colorful sometimes and, and just, you know, in his head because the confidence he has in himself and our group, like, hey, that, they got lucky work, you know, but I don't think that was the case. They obviously played really well. I think they played two really good games against us and, and earned themselves a victory last night. Well, there you have it. Very exciting uh, that uh, Aaron Boone again uh, is talking out of the side of his mouth. He's always talking about how wonderful everything is and how they got it all figured out. We, you know, it's a big game. We got to got to execute. We got to do this. He's been saying that every year since he's been here every day. And then it's the same nonsense you hear him talk about in the playoffs. The reality is this. He doesn't have the stones to talk about how bad Aaron Judge sucks in the postseason. I mean, give him the numbers, Carver High, for what this guy has done against Lugo besides absolutely nothing. Yeah, uh, for Lugo, who's pitching for the Royals tonight, Judge is 0 for 8 with three strikeouts. Uh, So he has not gotten a hit off of Seth Lugo in his career. I mean, few have here uh, done well against Lugo on the Yankees. Chisholm, Jazz is 1 for 11 with five strikeouts. Stanton, three for 14 with six strikeouts. Uh, Soto is five for 18, but he has struck out a bunch against him, does have one homer. You know, it's not, uh, it's not pretty. Uh, Let's just say that. Some of the history against Lugo, who, as you know, Scott, he's been very good uh, for the Royals, was good last week as well uh, for them in Houston. Or in, uh, yes, uh, they won the first, in Baltimore. Yeah, well, listen, I'm scared to death of uh, this team tonight at that place, at the K. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the way they play in Anaheim and at the Ashtray in Oakland. Uh, You go to Kansas City and they lay eggs there as well, right? Like, have you ever seen them dominate at Kansas City? I haven't. And they've been in all kinds of games there over the years, playoff games or otherwise. That. Uh, ballpark's been there for 50 years. Uh, it's one of the oldest ballparks in Major League Baseball. And uh, it's a house of horrors as far as I'm concerned. I'm scared to death of the game. And I'm scared to death of Clark Schmidt. I'm scared to death of Lugo. I'm scared to death to just even watch the game because I know I'm going to lose my temper. Every time I watch yeah. him, I lose my temper. When I watch this guy bat and swing and miss by a foot on every pitch, I don't even recognize him. I don't even, that's, it's not him. It's it's a it's a wax doll. I don't know what it is. It's Madame Tussaud. I don't know who this guy is. That's not Aaron Judge. The guy had a, a 144 RBIs. I mean, the guy hits 320. The guy hits 58 homers. And he goes to the postseason. He can't lift the ball out of the infield. It strikes out every time he's up. Misses every pitch by a foot. Nobody else on that team can hit. It's unbelievable what happens to them when he gets shut down. They get shut down. 
I am very worried. I I buy the Royals tonight. Now watch the Yankees will win by seven runs. Well, listen, this has uh, it's getting the feel of the same thing we've seen with the Yankees in the playoffs the last five six years. Uh, they just don't hit when it, the money gets put on the table uh, in the postseason. They are favored though tonight on the road in Kansas City. They're minus a buck twenty right now. The Royals are even money. And this is our biggest total of the day, an eight and a half. Uh, the book's expecting some runs between these two. Yeah, well, what do you think? Uh, I, I think runs as well based on who's pitching. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I don't think the Yankees are going to be the ones scoring runs. As uh, pessimistic and as much as I drag the Yankees around here, uh, especially over oh, the past couple of years, them. I, there's, I just feel like they're gonna, they're gonna find a way tonight in Kansas City. I'm actually taking right. the Yankees Let's tonight. I, I do think they're gonna win. Uh, and go. then I do think, how about this? I'll give you one more. I think if they win tonight, Cole will pitch great tomorrow and shut down Kansas City and end it uh, in four. I think that Cole will jump back in. And I can't believe I'm saying this because I have, I have no one is dragging the Yankees. He more couldn't than get Yankees. anyone out when he faced uh, them. I know. I think that I think they're gonna break our hearts, but not yet. I don't think this. I don't think they're gonna go out so quietly. I think that they'll be next week uh, in the ALCS where they probably do it to us. Uh, not this oh, week. So I'm taking so the Yankees you, tonight. Oh, so you got them winning this division series and going to the pennant? I, I think that if they win tonight, they will. Uh, they're gonna I'm win tomorrow night too. I'm they won't lose a game to in get Kansas them City. through today, and you got them already yeah. into next week. I mean, what how is about next? this? You pick the winner at a Black Rock. What? I'll, is I'll next? tell you this. Here's how I think this this weird this series is. Whoever wins tonight, I think will win tomorrow. I don't think there'll be a game five uh, with the Yankees and the Royals back in the Bronx. I think if the Royals win tonight, they'll beat Cole tomorrow. I think if the Yankees win tonight, Cole will pitch great and they'll end it tomorrow. I don't think there'll be five games. Whoever oh, wins tonight is going to win the series. <laughs> Mafia, get the Maalox and my pills and a bottle. You're gonna of need it. You're gonna need it. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, the final game of the evening will be the Padre, pa, uh, Padres and uh, the Dodgers, as uh, San Diego uh, will uh, look to advance to the NLCS. A six-five win last night. How about that second inning? Weird inning, right? Uh, lots of ground balls. The Dodgers couldn't handle. You had that play you and Gabe were talking about that went. Machado was not in the baseline, and it hit him and rolled into the outfield. Then finally, one big blow I caps off a six-run second inning. It would be all the Padres would need. Fernando Tatis Jr., 97-3 the fan in San Diego. Here's the 0-2, and Tatis sends it in the air. Deep to left field. Hernandez is back, looking up. Going to go! Two-run homer, Fernando Tatis Jr., and it is a six-run Second inning. Yeah, but that didn't last, did it? I mean, they they thought it was all over, but the shouting uh, when he hit that home run that it was, you know, party time at Petco. But uh, Teoscar Hernandez had something to say about that with that uh, Grand Slam breakfast. Everyone loves the Grand Slam breakfast at Denny's. Uh, Everybody does love uh, the Grand Slam breakfast at Denny's. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., what's he got now? Four homers in the playoffs in five games. He's hitting 600. Uh, He has been unbelievable. Have you ever seen a guy hit 556? He's uh, excellent. Excellent is what he's been. Uh, And look, I got him for most homers in the playoffs, so if he wants to keep hitting home runs at 40-1, to that's fine by me. Uh, Please keep doing it. Uh, after we oh. talk, I'll talk to Cam about the Black Desert. Give me another and then I'll play you tonight, another tater. <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, I'll play you Dave Roberts and give you all the numbers uh, for this evening after I get Cam's picks here for the Black Desert. You got to give me some more taters for tonight. There's got to be more home runs hit in that yeah. game tonight. Guaranteed. <laughs>
anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by SportsGrid. He already has more than a thousand yards. The last three running backs to win the Heisman, Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, Reggie Bush, did not have more than 650 in their opening five games of the year. Ashton Gentry on pace to strike the pose in December. Statistics matter. Blow every record out of the water, and he will be a Heisman. Disgraceful performance by the head coach, not Gene. The early line, only on Sports Grid. are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Wednesday, a golf Wednesday on C to C as we get ready for the Black Desert Championship. New one uh, on the card for the PGA out in Utah. Of course, Cam Stewart is with us every Wednesday when there's golf to give all the picks for this week's event. Cam, it is great to see you as always and catch Cam at night with Gabe on Sports Rage Late Night. Uh, here we go, Cam. Let's do it. Uh, I was talking to Stewie already, and yep. I got a little bit of the breakdown for this place. Uh, new course, and I mean not just a new event. He said the course, Cam, isn't even two years old. Uh, wow. It's a freshly built course uh, about two hours northeast of Vegas in southern Utah. So uh, lots of elevation, lots of rocks. It's a really cool place, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing these guys get it going. Uh, in terms of the names – that are going to be there. Uh, it's very similar to last week, uh, mm-hmm. like we had at the chicken tournament, uh, the Sanderson Farms. Keith Mitchell, Seamus Power, Fishburn, uh, Kitty Yama, Bo Hostler, uh, who, of course, lost in the playoff to you. Uh, Captain Kirk is actually here this week, Jaeger Bomb. So this is kind of, Cam, what we're dealing with as we get ready to uh, play some PGA golf in Utah. Great call, Carver, and congratulations on your hat and hit on the European Tour. Thank and you. Keith, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, Brady Cannon hit you at 120, so tune into the golf show. I'm I'm the guy who's uh, trailing behind. i got to pick it up. My guys get close, Carver. They never seem to do it, but I feel great this week. Uh, this course, basically, Carver, these guys are going to murder this course. Like, I thought with the elevation, it'd be like 7,600, but it's only like 72-plus. And with the elevation... Like, there's some, like, the the balls are going to fly here. So, we'll see. It's probably going to turn into a putting contest. Uh, I think it's going to be great. A lot of of young guys doing really, really well. I was on Fjord Bjornsson last week. I know both of us like this kid, and he's going to break through really soon. And I'm thinking maybe even this week. Uh, I I hope so, uh, Cam, because he is on my card as we get it going here uh, for the Black Desert. Uh, I'm going, I know this guy's super super chalky this week yeah i feel like everybody's on him because he went to byu he's a utah guy the local ties that's patrick fishburn and he hasn't played poorly either so 30 to 1 for him cam i'll start the card there you said thor bjornson was 80 last week well he's 45 this week he played well finished in the top 10 so we're gonna go with him again i just got a feeling that this mark put the hubbard in the cupboard 
is good gonna win one of these swing events. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I just I, I feel like he's good enough, Cam. He's gotta win one of these swing events. 65 to 1 for him. Nick the dentist Taylor. <laughs> We're gonna get back involved with him at 80 to 1. Now he played awful, Cam, uh the last four or five months of the year. Uh Stewie was telling me before, comp courses for this. Uh, you know, is uh, it, uh Arizona with Scottsdale where they play TPC mm-hmm. Scottsdale. Where where did who won there this year? Nick Taylor uh, has played well there, so I'm gonna go a little comp with him, eighty to one here in Utah, and Hizat soon at a hundred oh, to boy. one. I had to throw one. That's your guy, Cam. And Name I'm it on wheel. Train with Hizat soon <laughs> at a hundred to one. Yes, my Japanese friend, very close before, plays on boat tours. I like this guy and. Carver, it's the same thing. Also, watch out this week. I was just doing some deep research. I think Lucas Glover, if he putts, he could be there. A very dangerous player. Watch out for Lucas yeah. Glover who's starting to turn it around. Fishburn, I'm on him too. It's one of those things. We got to take him. He, he might break through. Jaegerbaum, I love him this week. I'm like, wow, 35 in this field is actually a good price. Our boy, when I called Carver at church and Mrs. Carver's like, what's going on? We won. More money in the collection plate. When Ryan Fox won, I'm on again. So many guys let me down, but the Fox man, I'm going with him in the foxhole this week. He's a friend at 38 to 1. Fjord Bjornsson, the pride of Stanford, next to Tiger Woods, love him. Jacob Bridgman, another young player playing great golf. And watch out for comp courses, Car- Carver. I love the Nick the Dentist Taylor pick. And Norlander's another guy. Watch out for Norlander. He likes to play mm. these new courses really, really well. Great price at 90 to 1. Norlander there uh, for Cam. I actually do have Ryan Crazy Like a Fox, who has been a friend to us. Uh, mm-hmm. He's on my placements. A T20 at plus 175. Remember, he needs to play well, wants to make sure he's at all these events coming up uh, in the spring. Keith Mitchell uh, kind of blew it last week, to be quite yep. honest with you. I won't play him to win, but a T10 at 220. Captain Kirk, T10 at 350. Ben Griffin, a T20 at 160. There's Ryan Crazy Like a Fox. Harry English at top 20 at plus 230. And David Skins, yes. who was the first round leader last week, I will not dabble with that again or a five or a 10, but a 20 for Skinsy uh, at plus 360. I'll be there. Love it, Carver. Shirts versus Skins. Let's go. Love the Skins. Know what he is? He's a Thursday warrior. More with that a little bit later. Mitchell, top 10. I don't know if he can close. Plus 220. Seamus Power will do well this week. I'm not sure if he's going to get there, but I like the plus 260. As I said, Lucas Glover, one of the best ball strikers on tour. Got to get that putter going. Plus 160. Nova Kane. You're my boy Novak did really well last week, too. I might bet him outright, too, if I got more money. Plus 160. The Gim Reaper at uh, plus 175 for top 20. And don't look now. Burger Time's playing good golf. If you want a nice cold burger combo with Daniel from Florida State, I'm in. Watch out, Carver. If he gets close again this week, we got to take Burger Time next time because he's close. The Gim Reaper and Burger Time uh, <laughs> on the card this week. We love yep. to see it. First round leaders. I got a couple guys who love Thursdays. Captain Kirk is one of them at 45 mm-hmm. to 1. EVR is here this week, 45 to 1. He loves <laughs> yeah, Thursdays. Yes. Daniel Berger. There Burger. he is, Cam. I knew I had him on the card. 60 to 1. <laughs> Vincent Whaley the at butler. 70 to 1. A bomber. Henrik Norlander. There he is, 80 to 1. Lanto Griffin at 90 to 1. And there he is. Robbie, Robbie, don't call me Blake Shelton, Shelton. at 110 to 1 for the first <laughs> round leader. The, the voice with, with Robbie Shelton. <laughs> Let's go. I'm on Bo Hostler. This guy just, I'll take him. One of these, he always plays well early, 45 to 1. I'm on Captain Kirk, too, 45 to 1 for first round leader. Patrick Rogers hits it a mile. We'll do well this week. Patton Kazire, great in this fall season. Have you seen this guy's numbers? 60 to 1. Bud Colley making a comeback after injury. And David Shirts and Skins, first round leader. We're going back to back, baby. 110 to 1. Hello. Let's go, Carver. Money. Uh, getting out here. Uh, I think this will be fun. Uh, hopefully, Cam, we have some guys in the mix uh, on Sunday, and we can take this home and flip it on and watch them uh, at the high elevation hitting some bombs uh, off the tee. Next any week, European we'll be back. Guys? You got any uh, Europeans? I don't have, I don't have my boy, Nicholas Norgard. Almost closed. He closed okay. strong last week. 35 to 1, Carver. I'm telling where you, we're on the same week? stuff. Good things where, happen. Where are they? Where are ah, they? The Viva la, Fra- la France, Monsieur. Oh. Oui, oui. Ah, the is open Pavan on the field? For a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to 
before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by SportsGrid. He already has more than a 1,000 yards. The last three running backs to win the Heisman, Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, Reggie Bush, did not have more than 650 in their opening five games of the year. Ashton Gentry on pace to strike the pose in December. Statistics matter. Blow every record out of the water, and he will be a Heisman. Disgraceful performance by the head coach, not Gene. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Honestly, uh, Carver, hi. Always good to see the uh, prime minister, by the way. Uh, The TBS feed has uh, disappeared again. This is the second consecutive game that Turner and TNT, TBS, are both out right now. Now, I have every single channel known to man, literally on earth, working, except TBS and TNT. So it's the same thing all over again. There's some guy out there <laughs> mowing the property and he keeps going over their, their satellite feed line and chopping it up in the wood chipper. I mean, it is out again. There's no game on TV right now on the cable. They have lost their channel again. It's embarrassing. Two games in a row. I mean, once is bad enough. Twice is starting to become a trend. Yeah, that's... uh. That's not a good scene for them. Uh, I do have it on. I have, of course, the Max app cooking uh, in here in the office. That's, we, that's but, completely different from what I'm dealing with over here. <laughs> I know. Uh, and the Guardians do have two on and one out in the top it of the fifth. It just came back. And, and, and your boy, Bo, Bo Brisky Sandwich, has just come in out of the Tiger bullpen Bubby to try Brisky to get them sandwich. out of this mess. Bubby Brisky uh, trying to get involved here and get them out of this jam with David Fry up and Jose Ramirez looming on deck. All right, let's finish the Dodgers and the Padres. Here is Dave Roberts. As as I said to you at the top of the show, this is the uh, billion-dollar Dodgers spent a lot of money. Uh, They have been the hands-down favorites since spring training started in February to win the World Series. Well, that can all go up in smoke tonight. Dave Roberts said, hey, it's on the players. Another year on the brink of elimination. Is this where that group has to do it themselves. Like, I know you didn't want to say too much before the game. Is it the same thing now? It's the same thing. You're right. Um, It's 26 players that everyone's got to be available in whatever capacity. Uh, We've got to win tomorrow night to then pick up the pieces for game five. Uh, I don't know how that's going to look, but uh, certainly these guys came out with energy. We responded with a big tail homer. And um, I feel good about preventing runs. But again, we still got to play good defense too. Uh, I need to well, see Machado jack a home run and round third base and give Dave Roberts a, a full moon, like literally a full moon on the base path. I need to see Tatis hit another one. I do not want to watch this team uh, win this game tonight. I am not interested in the Dodgers going back to Chavez Ravine at all. I want to see them go down at Petco like everybody else. I mean, Marenzi is the only one I know rooting for the Dodgers. Seriously, like, 
Uh, they need Dylan Cease to go out and beat this guy, Knack. Knack's not the issue. I mean, they're going to use well, five or six pitchers tonight. Right. And Knack might not even be the first guy out. Uh, Robert said last night that it's, it's, it is a bullpen game. He would not name a starter uh, for this game. So they, Knack is probably the long guy. Uh, if they're, I mean, I think they're going to go kind of what the Tigers are doing in these games, which is they're going to go an inning by an inning uh, and try to get themselves through uh, this order. Uh, very dangerous, San Diego. Order. But I, I just can't believe that that's where they're at with all the money that they've spent. Now, I get it. Kershaw hurt. Glass now hurt. They've lost a lot of their arms, but Kershaw's still. Kershaw's finished. His career's over. Uh, they got Ramirez to fly out to center, Scotty. So threat uh, the Tigers skirt by again without giving up any runs after putting a few guys on. So they go to the bottom of the fifth in Detroit. Two nothing Tigers uh, here in this one. As far as the numbers for tonight, Padres are favored to close it out. Minus 135 with Cease on the hill, plus a buck 15 for the Dodger bullpen game. Seven and a half is the total. I, I got to go, Friars. I just got to. There's no There's no way I'm betting on the Dodgers. I just can't do it. I, I literally, my hand will catch on fire. If I try to put in a bet on the Dodgers, my, I'll have arthritis for five years. It's just not happening. I'll sprain my hand. I'll have another broken hand. Five places I broke it in surgery. I'll have to have my uh, hand operated on again. It's not happening. I'm not, I'm just not going there. And I'm not, I'm not betting on the Phillies. I'm not betting on the... You know, Dodgers. I'm sick of both of them. Yeah, send them both home tonight. Get them out. Let's you go. Lose. You lose. Get them out of here. Uh, we don't need either of them anymore. Mets, Padres, Sunday, game one. Let's go. Uh, get it set out in San Diego uh, for this weekend. Uh, because the Dodgers are going to throw a bunch of guys, I don't have too many numbers for you. All I'll tell you on the other side is Otani pretty good against Cease. Uh, five for 17, three homers off of him uh, from the Dodgers side of things. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by Sports Grid. He already has more than 1,000 yards. The last three running backs to win the Heisman, Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, Reggie Bush, did not have more than 650 in their opening five games of the year. Ashton Gentry on pace to strike the pose in December. Statistics matter. Blow every record out of the water, and he will be a Heisman. Disgraceful performance by the head coach, not Gene. The early line, only on SportsGrid. All right, 
Carver High, uh, we turn to Pain Day Skinny, which is crucial in every show in the f -f 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 foliage. Uh, it certainly is, as we are uh, get started with week six tomorrow night, Seahawks and Niners. We'll get to that in a moment, but usually uh, we start Wednesdays because Tomlin's one of the few coaches in the league who actually talks on Tuesdays. Uh, we usually do start with him to get things cooking. And what do we usually do every week with Mike? What is the weekly temperature check of his quarterback situation? Russell Wilson practiced in full today. Mike is looking to see if he can make it through the entire week practicing in full, but it still sounds like, at least for this week, he might still be leaning to fields. Mike, as you sit here today with Justin working with the ones tomorrow, are you preparing as he's going to start this weekend, or is, it more, is there an opportunity for Russ to maybe start on Sunday? Again, as I've said, until Russ gets to a point where we're comfortable with what we're looking at, he's able to execute all schematics. He's able to put, the back, put together back-to-back -back consecutive days and so forth. Um, I just think that's a hypothetical conversation. We're going to continue to push forward with Justin until those things are legitimate, and then we'll make decisions accordingly. Mm. He doesn't answer questions about who's starting ever. No. And the reality is uh, you just heard everything you need to know that Fields is playing in Vegas on Sunday against Aiden O'Connell, who will be the Raiders starter. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think we both think it's Fields this week, and I think he's got to he's got to play well uh, against the Steelers. He got to play well, and he's got to win. Uh, they they somehow lose that game this week, uh, then they're absolutely will be a change at the guard uh, I mean, for honestly, the quarterback Mike, position. They need to. Uh, here, here's the deal. They need to take this kid's head off. I mm. mean, honestly, like you know, I've had enough of the. They don't blitz. I've had enough of uh, all the – they don't run the ball. I, I've had enough of they, they don't throw it to Pickens. I've had enough of they don't have any other receivers. I've had enough of hearing about Russell Wilson's calf. I've had enough of hearing his field's good enough to go week to week. Uh, all I know is between Herbig and Watt and Highsmith, they need to take off Aiden O'Connell's head and serve it up to the Raiders on a platter with a fork and a knife and a napkin. There you go. We just took your quarterback's head off. This young guy sucks. Uh, he's never done anything in the NFL at all except run around in circles. They need to take his head off. They got to stop with the losing. They need to attack him, put him down hard, and win this game with defense. And they got to let Fields do his thing and break ankles. And they got to start throwing the ball to Pickens. If you're not going to throw the ball to him, then get rid of him too. They've gotten rid of every other effing receiver they've ever had in Pittsburgh. Honestly, I don't understand the morons, and, and, and that includes that con. What are you doing with this Canada to Art Smith offensive coordinator jobs you keep handing out to these hacks? These hack-ass terrible coaches that don't know whether they're coming or going. I've had enough of it, honestly. Mafia, get me more bourbon. Uh, you have had enough of it, and it will be, as you just said, Aiden O'Connell, uh, who will start uh, for the Raiders this week. Uh, first game he will start this season. He replaces Gardner Minshew. Tomlin did talk about Pickens, said that uh, he does not question his effort. The press was really uh, hounding him yesterday about how many snaps he played on Sunday, about the eye black that he had on. The NFL is going to uh, find him for the eye black. Uh, the NFL will absolutely find him. I don't know why Tomlin had to act like he didn't know it happened, which is what he did yesterday. He kind of played silly with it. Oh, I didn't see what he had on his face. Come on, Mike. Uh, my, Mike is like, he, he's like a college. He knows everything that's going on with his football team inside and out. Uh, there's no way he didn't know that Pickens had that across his face. But either way, uh, he says that he does not question the guy's effort. I'm with you. Throw the guy the football. All right? He's out there on a... If you're only going to play him 53% of the snaps now, which honestly, seems to be their new norm, uh, then, when those, then in those 53% of the snaps, get him involved. Uh, I mean, geez, what do you got him out there for uh, if you don't? How, uh, nothing awful, changed. how yeah. awful are there? It, it really is their receiving core. Uh, how it's, awful? Uh, I saw today, uh, I think the Steelers have, if you just go with the starters, the Steelers have, I think, the highest-paid defense 
in the NFL, which kind of makes sense, right? Watt, Fitzpatrick, Hayward, like you add up all the guys, it probably makes a lot of sense. And they have the cheapest offense in the league. They have the highest paid defense. They have the lowest paid offense. They got a broke-ass uh, offensive line and a broke-ass receiving core. It shows. Uh, it shows when you watch him every week. You can tell who's the backbone of that team. Uh, it is the defense, that's for sure. Uh, so there you go. Steelers and the Raiders. Uh, late window on Sunday. Uh, the 4 o'clock window east. All right, next. The Jets, of course, made a change at coach yesterday. Out with Robert Sala. Uh, in with Jeff Ulbrich, uh, who was the defensive coordinator. He will be the interim head coach. Uh, he is open to some changes, although it doesn't sound like he's going to make many. Here's Ulbrich. When it comes to the team underperforming the last uh, this season, do you think <clears throat> there has to be radical changes, or do you think you guys have to do what you've been doing but do it better? I, I think everything's on the table right now. We're not playing to our the, to our potential. We're not, you know, we're we're too talented to to be putting the the product we put out there the last couple of weeks, especially. So uh, we got to take a hard look at everything and be honest with ourselves. Mm. No uh, nonsense guy. Yeah, Here we go. Uh, Mr. No nonsense like, is coming in. Oh, look out. Be honest with ourselves. Proofs in the pudding. Look at the record. There's your, there's your, uh, be honest with yourselves. You, you're, you're losing. You've just fired your coach. You're the new interim coach. And it's now your responsibility to win. I mean, I'm going to blame you if they don't win. Uh, they don't blame Aaron Rodgers for anything. Uh, and speaking of Rodgers, uh, he did say today, that uh, there is ab- he had absolutely nothing to do uh, with Salah being fired. It's ridiculous that people would even mention it. Uh, he cannot believe. He says, yes, I talked to Woody on Monday night. Uh, we did not say anything about uh, firing Robert Salah. So there you go. Uh, Rogers, I don't believe uh, could- any of them at all. None of them. But I believe this. He is uh, He's in charge of the Jets. And uh, they win or lose with his arm. I mean, no one blames the defense for anything. They, uh, you know, allegedly have the best defense in the NFL, which they're far from, far from the best. But they think they're the best. And uh, they think they have all this talent, and yet all they do is lose. So who are you going to blame now? Ghostbusters? I mean, honestly, like, you know, go out and win. I'm sick of hearing about, you know, be honest with ourselves and all this other nonsense. I mean, honestly, I'm sure Mafia is sick of it too. He's the Jets fan in here. I'd give a rat's ass about him. Uh, they, of course, will play on Monday night. We got a lot of time before we get there. Uh, Bills minus two and a half, 40 and a half uh, is going to be the total for that one. And I saw some of the Bill uh, injury stuff from today, Scotty. Uh, that That's not looking very pretty for them at all. It's that Shakir didn't practice again today. And Oliver didn't practice again. Uh, James Cook apparently got banged up at the end of that Houston game uh, on Sunday. Uh, The Bills are going to be coming in very wounded uh, to to MetLife on Monday night. I mean, that doesn't sound good at all, uh, that they're shorthanded. Does not. And uh, the Jets need that. They both need it desperately. But one team is just crippled, the Bills, and the other team has a new coach and that juice, and they're desperate. So, I mean, I'm starting to lean green. Uh, I, I, If I was not, uh, of course, in root, big rooting interest, I would be leaning green as well uh, when you start to stack all of those things in front of you. Uh, not a good scene for them. All right, we'll come back. Tigers have two on and one out here with Veerling coming up uh, for them. We'll see if they can get some things cooking. Uh, We'll go to the Niners and the Hawks next, Scotty, when we come back. They will start Thursday night football. In Seattle. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in 
on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by SportsGrid. He already has more than a thousand yards. The last three running backs to win the Heisman, Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, Reggie Bush, did not have more than 650 in their opening five games of the year. Ashton Gentry on pace to strike the pose in December. Statistics matter. Blow every record out of the water, and he will be a Heisman. Disgraceful performance by the head coach, not Gene. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Sixth and uh, Detroit, two zip Tigers. They uh, just had runners on, couldn't do anything with it. So, two zip Tigers going to the sixth, and uh, Cleveland still down a couple runs. All right, uh, Thursday night at Lumen Field, what do we got? Yes, uh, we will have the Seahawks and the 49ers both coming off some bad losses, right? Niners lose at home to the Arizona Cardinals, Seahawks lost at home to the Giants. Uh, not very inspiring as we get ready here for Thursday night. Uh, Seahawks rookie head coach Mike McDonald. We haven't done a lot of him on Coast to Coast, frankly, because uh, he's boring, uh, which is why uh, we have not done a lot of Mike McDonald so far this <laughs> season on C to C. But uh, here he is getting ready. Back to back short weeks. Remember, they played Monday night last week, had to play Sunday. Now a short week, Sunday to Thursday. How's Mike dealing with all that? You, you mentioned quick turnaround. There's three games you play again. How hard is it to? to fix things fundamentally and to pick yourself up when there are such short gaps. It doesn't matter how hard it is. Nobody has any, you know, nobody cares. we got to work harder. You know I mean? It's just, that's the way it is. So, I mean, oh. it's an opportunity to go make it right in four days. That's really what we need to focus on. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, there I, you listen, go. There's Mike. Uh, he's like a garage door. He's so boring. Uh, let me ask you, uh, the Niners losing uh, to Arizona at home, that to me – was more stunning than the Giants winning against Seattle with a new coach. They they got a new coach because they were stinking it up with Pete Carroll the last couple of years, and it was all over the place, that football team. So uh, I think the Niners are more dangerous coming into this game than Seattle is. And Seattle's got three defensive starters down. And, I mean, how many weeks are we going to watch San Francisco suck? You know, I, I think it's fantastic. I love watching them lose. There's nothing better than – one of the odds, they're the, they're the NFC favorites to go to the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. the Chiefs and Niners every year. They're your favorites, betters' favorites, most tickets, everything else. They're two and three. Watching them lose to me is delicious, but I think it ends right here. They're two and three, and they're still the favorite right now uh, for yeah. the NFC, and they're yeah. two and three. Uh, they are three and a half point road favorites in Seattle. On a short week, the total's 49 and a half. I know we're going to talk more about this game tomorrow, but just on the surface uh, here, Scotty, I, I, you know, that that's a very difficult place to play, especially in prime time. As we know, uh, going there to Seattle, the place is nuts. And that hook uh, is very enticing to me from the home side, especially on a short week on a Thursday. And I think the total's a little high. 
I, I think we're, I know last week we saw some fireworks with the Bucks and the Falcons. Uh, I think that this game is going to be played uh, a little bit closer to the vest, a little bit more low scoring. All right, so low scoring, and uh, you think that it sounds like Seattle covers the three and a half. I'm leaning there for now, uh, unless uh, somebody changes my mind between now and tomorrow. Uh, we'll find out. Do you but that's know the where price I'm at on, on, on uh, San Francisco to win the game outright? Minus 178 money line for San Francisco. That's too juicy. A little too much. A little too so, much. So, you know, uh, I got to tell you, uh, when – this year, to me, in betting in the NFL, it's it's anything over five and a half is where the problem has been. It has not been a problem, in my view, at three and a half yet, which is usually a problem. Three and a, three and a hook is the everyone's worst nightmare always. But it hasn't been this year. It's been five and a hook and above. You go seven and a hook, I mean, you'll cover every time, every time. But nowadays, why is it that three and a half hasn't turned into your worst nightmare? Explain that to me. Uh, You're right. Uh, Very interesting. I know I've got every week I give you the numbers, and I'm going to give them to you again later about the teams that are five and a half points uh, or more favored uh, and how they have not covered this year. So, But three and a half, for whatever reason, has not been an issue. Uh, We'll see if it's not for the Niners tomorrow night as well. I actually have another road uh, favorite of three and a half to talk to you about next. Uh, And that is the Bengals going into MetLife Sunday night against the Giants. Now, of course, when you start one and four, what starts to happen? Uh, Everybody starts looking for reasons why. Uh, And in Cincinnati now, because Burrow and Chase have started playing so well, now the narrative narrative is, Scotty, that the Bengals aren't prepared. Uh, And where does that fall? Uh, The head coach, Zach Taylor, what does he think of all that? You don't sense that in any way, shape, or form preparation, lack of preparation has factored into beating one. I really don't. I really don't. We, we, you know, we go back through practice tape after games, you know, to see similar situations and um, to see what we can do better to prepare our guys, to see where technique can improve. And so, again, we, we go through, through it thoroughly, um, trying to make sure we're not missing anything. Yeah, yeah. I got to tell you, we give a lot of attention to this team that season is over. It really is amazing to me that we keep talking about this team that season is over. Okay, like, explain it to me. Why do we keep talking about a team that never wins? They never win. I mean, the, uh, now listen, I enjoy every minute of it. I'm in the AFC North, so the more the Browns and Bengals lose, the, the merrier. All I got to worry about is the Ravens, which is a real problem in life. And then I'm going to go to that game on November 17th, and we'll see how it goes. The Steelers always play the Ravens tough. Tougher than anybody else. The Ravens beat everybody, but they have a problem with the Steelers. And everybody knows it. So I don't care about Zach's problems at all. In fact, I hope he has more of them. I hope his mother Uh, turns on him. His problem this week might be uh, Daniel Jones, right? With how well he's played. You actually sent Uh, me this this uh, morning. Uh, Who's been the better quarterback in New York so far? Look at this. Jones, better completion percentage. Yards. Touchdown to interception, QBR, EPA, uh, all better uh, than the other Jersey quarterback so far. Everything better for Danny Dimes. And you're telling me, where is the game with uh, the Bengals? It's at it's at Snoopy. Oh, it's at Snoopy. Yeah, Sunday night. Oh. Uh, primetime game at Snoopy. Uh, and oh. the Bengals are. Same thing. Three and a half road favorite for the Bengals at Snoopy oh, on gotta, Sunday night. I got that might be one I lap up that three and a hook on the other side. <laughs> G-men, 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 big blue for you on Sunday night, huh? Get a little G-men uh, going against the Bengals hey, uh, here. Why not? They the NFL in sacks. They got a defense. Their quarterback's been good. And they're uh, doing it without neighbors. Yeah. Without their star Dylan receivers. Can... So I yeah. like the Giants. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. 
This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decision that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by SportsGrid. He already has more than a 1,000 yards. The last three running backs to win the Heisman, Derrick Henry, Mark Ingram, Reggie Bush, did not have more than 650 in their opening five games of the year. Ashton Gentry on pace to strike the pose in December. Statistics matter. Blow every record out of the water, and he will be a Heisman. Disgraceful performance by the head coach, not Gene. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I mean, this next story uh, confuses me, Carver High, because I think Will Levis stinks. And I've seen enough. I, I, I how much of a, a of a plethora of games and and highlights and videos and game clips and games watched live do I have to watch this guy suck to realize that now it's simple to me. One guy goes out and moves the ball and they and they win <laughs> and they score and they score on every drive, <laughs> seven straight drives. And the other guy, all he does is lose games and, and screw it up and throw picks and fumble. Now, and now this guy, you want her dirty Harry? How long is his shelf life? It's going to be as tied into this guy. You keep going with a guy that sucks as bad as that, you won't last either. Now, one guy gets it done, the other guy screws it up. And they're going with the guy that screws it up. So I got a real issue with that. I think you're Yeah, stupid. we have... We have not seen the Titans, of course. Uh, they had a bye last week uh, since a couple weeks ago when they beat the Dolphins on that Monday night game where Levis hurt his shoulder. Mason Rudolph comes in, led him to those scores, led him to their first win. But uh, all that time with the bye seemingly has gotten Levis healthy. He was throwing at practice today. And Callahan says that if he's healthy, uh, he's going to start. Um, no, I mean, I think if, if he's good to practice and good to go, then, then he's going to play. Um, and that's really unless it's affecting his ability to do his job um, i don't think that that'll be there'll be any discussion on that point um again if it's if it still hurts a ton and he's having trouble throwing effectively and all those things then yeah that's a whole different conversation but uh, again we'll just see how the week of practice goes uh but i feel pretty good about where he should be at that's great well i feel really good about watching him suck all the time and all i have to do is watch and you'll see the same thing too it's one game after the next like, I mean, uh, proof's in the pudding. It's real simple. Uh, he doesn't get it done. And, you know, they show how strong he is. He's got big guns. He eats mayonnaise. I mean, the guy, oh, everyone loves him. Listen, bro, he don't win. He sucks. That's it. He's a college football quarterback. That's what he is. That's it. It's that, it's that simple. I'm not nice. I am not nice. You know that. I don't sugarcoat anything over here. I mean, that guy is hairdryer city. 
Now, the other guy, it is mystifying to me. It, I can't explain it. I could never bet. If it were on the SAT, I'd get it wrong. ACT, I would have got that wrong. How is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer continuing to score and win? How does Rudolph do it I have with his nose so bright? I have no idea, but he wins. That's it. He wins. He wins. The other guy sucks. Rudolph wins. That's all I know. And this is the NFL. You win, you keep your job. You lose, you get fired. That's usually how it goes. Uh, and it's an interesting game this week because the Titans off a buyer at home against Indy. Now, the Titans are one-and-a-half-point favorites here on Wednesday. I just went and looked. Anthony Richardson did practice today. We saw Indy last week with Flacco in the game. What a difference that is. Now, I don't think that there's people in Indy necessarily banging down the door yet uh, that want Flacco in there over Richardson. Uh, clearly, they want him to play, but he just can't stay on the field. I think if Flacco's playing... I might take the Colts with that one and a half on Sunday, uh, Scotty. Mike, I'm with you 100. Here's the deal. Joe Flacco is incredible. He is the best backup quarterback in the NFL or, you know, starter, whatever you want to call him. Bottom line is, last year what he did for the Cleveland Browns was really indescribable. What he's doing now with the Colts, same thing. He is fantastic. He's got it down to a science. And you can quote me on this. He's better than Anthony Richardson. I mean, I mean, he is so much better than him as a quarterback, it's not even funny. Like, Richardson is a big, talented, athletic guy, and that's why he's their quarterback. Not because he's good. He's not good. He's just big, strong, and athletic, and he's dangerous looking. People are like, oh, Jesus, look at the size of him. Oh, my God, he's prototypical. He's so strong. This brother can really run. That's incredible. Meanwhile, the fat old man with a beer gut who doesn't shave ever, he's got neck, beard, everything else. He's old as F. He wins and throws, I mean, just ropes the entire game, just one pass after the net. He's Joe Montana. I mean, the guy is literally just cashing in every pass every week. He is the best thing. The Colts, if they play him, they win. If they play Richardson, oh, God, what a disaster. Black Rose should be the Colts quarterback. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on Sports Grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. 